Right. right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming in the early morning. So today, Aaron and I will be presenting our fourth year design project on behalf of our group, group number one. And our topic will be physical adhesive patch for wound protection. So we started our project with the simple thought that one day that I had a bandage on my skin and then it was keep falling off because I was doing lots of dishwashing and cooking. And at that time we thought, why not find an alternative for the bandage that does not come off when it contact with the water. So we start researching and then surprisingly, the mark we found that the market for the wound management product is increasing annually uh, thanks to the popular, increasing popularity with the cosmetic surgery worldwide. So as a result, the uh, global revenue of the wound management product has uh, is expected to reach $4.7 billion by 2019. So knowing that, knowing what can be improved from the conventional bandage, we, we plan to develop an alternative that doesn't depend on the chemical adhesive. We believe that the bandage should be the quickest and the easiest medical aid in any circumstances, and such circumstance should include uh, everyday activity, including dishwashing and cooking. So to fulfill our belief, we present to you the physical adhesive patch that uses swelling nature of the microneedles to physically hold an open wound or a cut on the skin and internal organs. <coughs> uh, at this stage, we haven't set any limitation for the application because what we want is to bring the surgical treatment to home. So uh, from now on, I'll start with the overview of the conventional bandage, including the current market size and the market trend, and some of the limitations of the chemical adhesive. Uh, so bandage has been with us for as far as we can remember, so, the, so it is not new. In fact, by 2014, the age of the bandage market is as old as 94 years old, so which means the market is very mature. Uh, the figure on the left is uh, from the 2013 annual report from Johnson & Johnson showing that the uh, one care product accounts for $1.5 billion of the total revenue, to uh, total consumer sales, which has grown 5.1% since a year before. So knowing the market is increasing and growing, the, one closure, the wound closure product will remain the largest selling groups while the traditional chemical adhesive bandage will dominate the market, uh, it, is the, it is the new sector that will see the best growth. So uh, in 2012, the new technologies accounted for 32% of the market and are forecast to rise 37% by 2017. Of the older technologies, such air will be the most affected falling from a market share of 48% from 2012 to 45% by 2017. So from this part, we'll discuss about some of the adhesive strength of the convention, commercial, commercial bandage that's using chemical adhesive. Uh, as you can see from the figure here, the kit care product has the highest adhesive strength. Uh, this is expected because it is intended for the use of the children, and they are the most active. Uh, surprise, uh, in fact, about 70% of the consumer bandage sold in the United States are used for the children. So, that, so we believe that to enter the market successfully, that our bandage should exhibit uh, adhesive strengths similar to that of the kid care product. But what are the limitations of the chemical adhesive? Uh, so while the, while it, while the, this chemical adhesive bandage is dominating the market, there are few, there are some limitations, including skin irritation, that people, certain people exhibit, shows allergic reaction to, due to the glues used for adhesive. And of course there are damp skins underneath the patch after the use. And of, 
the last one, the last problem is the sticky residue, which remind us every day that we are living in the world of dust. Another issue will be the durability, because it does not retain much tension on the skin. And the critical, the most, pro the most critical problem will be the water, that any contact with water compromise the performance of the adhesives. So our primary goal is to create functional prototype that can have the adhesive strength similar to that of the kit care product and maintain the tension required for the scar-free healing. Our secondary goal is to divide and extend the application to internal and external. Internal as a alternative for the alternative for the surgical suture, and the external as an alternative for the adhesive bandage. And our last goal is, of course, commercialization. Okay, now we're going to move on to um, to more of the design process of how we designed and our ideal. Um, prototype, what our ideal prototype would be. And before we do that, we take a look at um, the mechanisms for adhesion. The first one is the, um, is the mechanical interlocking as displayed on the very right there. Um, the, it's composed of two layers. Number one is the structural layer, such, uh, structural layer so the, the dark blue color that keeps the, um, the anchors in place and the correct shape. While the second layer is the swellable polymer layer where once it contacts with the dermis layer, it will swell and basically lock into the skin. Now, another, small, another mechanism of adhesion is just uh, increasing the surface area uh, and contact from, uh, from the patch to the, uh, to the skin, and that will have some adhesion as well. Now, so for our design considerations, we had uh, four main areas of design considerations. Our first one is the patch. We look at the size and how, how much that can cover. Our second one is the thickness, and that will look at the flexibility of our patch. And all, the material will also uh, talk, look at the flexibility. Our second uh, design is the anchor design. So we look at the shape of uh, the anchor and to see um, the puncture, the, the amount of pressure we require to puncture the skin, as well as the orientation to make sure that we have um, equal amount of pressure when, uh, tension on the skin when it's uh, pulling apart. Next, we look at the materials. We have to make sure that the material that we use is um, biocompatible. Uh, our second layer, we have to look at, um, you have to make sure that it's uh, swellable. And lastly, we want to make sure that it's compatible with our fabrication methods. And lastly is our synthesis or fabrication methods. We want to find a method that can, we can take from small scale and bring it up to, the, to a larger scale for commercialization. And lastly, we look at, um, the reproduci uh, reproducibility of using that uh, manufacturing method. Now, we go over to the anchor shape. We, ex we uh, explored several, four, uh, four, an four anchor shapes or leg shapes. We looked at the cylinder, the cone, the pencil shape, and also like a cylinder with a hemisphere on the top. We wanted to see how much uh, pressure was involved and also the compression, amount of compression we have. Um, here on the bottom here is our console simulation of, this, of, the, uh, of our simulation. And basically, each leg will ha has the same amount of force pushing up on it. And we here, we see the most deformation occur in the cone shaped. And we don't want that because later on, it will decompress, and that will, that will cause uh, less adhesion. So basically, we concluded that the pencil shape was the most effective based on uh, piercing of the skin and also adhesion. <coughs> Next, we look at the anchor orientation. We, we explored the square orientation up there and also the offset orientation. And here we looked at the amount of force um, because when you apply it to a wound, there will be a tension across it. And we looked at the amount of force and we saw that they're around the same order of magnitude but the offset one has a, uh, has a slightly larger value, so we decided to go with the square orientation. Now, Jose is going to continue with the materials. Yep. So the purpose of the structural layer is to maintain the shape of the anchor during the penetrations through the skin and during the healing period. And because of the synthesis process that we are using, uh, what we weigh the most of the property is the glass transition temperature. 
So four candidates were chosen, which are PK, PEI, polycarbonate, and polystyrene. And due to the process that we are using, which is the hot press, we chose polystyrene because it has the lowest glass transition temperature, and at the same time, it has the highest O2 permeation. So because, our, because the layers of our product will be applied using hot press, the swellable layer must, the polymer for the swallowable, swallowable layer must have a glass transition temperature higher than that of the structural layer. Because as you have seen from the previous theoretical slide, theoretical design, that the, first the swellable layer will be applied on the mold and then the secondary layer, which is the structural layer, which gives the structure, will be applied. So, which means that the swellable layer should have a higher glycation temperature, which, which wouldn't, make, wouldn't melt during the uh, application of the secondary layer. But uh, in our initial design, we plan to use all three of these polymers just to test the swellability because we weren't sure how much it's going to swell on our skin. But unfortunately, at our current stage, we couldn't achieve the double layer structure. OK, so um, the synthesis methods we decided to look at were micromilling, or for the template was micromilling and 3D printing as well as lithography. Um, for three, we quickly eliminated 3D printing because the resolution was not high enough. So it was based between micromilling and lithography. Um, unfortunately, lithography is very expensive. As well, the 700 micrometer depth is, not, uh, is very hard to achieve using lithography. So we decided to go with uh, micromilling instead. Now, so to sum it all up for the prototypes, we decided for our ideal prototype on, is on the top right corner. So it's two layered pencil shaped anchors uh, with the square orientation on the anchors. Using, we used polystyrene as the first material and also we would hot press with, a, uh, with an aluminum template which we have right here. Um, but after um, realization of this product, <coughs> we used cylindrical shaped anchors because the, uh, using micro, uh, the micromilling technique, we cannot get the, the pencil, the cone shape at the very end due to the, um, the aspect ratio. So we, we used cylinder instead. Uh, the square orientation is the same. And then next we tried to use polystyrene as our material, but it was too brittle. And we have one here to show you guys. Basically, after a hot press, um, it just broke off really quickly. So, and, and also the anchors wouldn't come out of the mold. So we decided against using polystyrene afterwards. And instead we used HDP and LDP, which are more flexible materials. And therefore, it will be probably harder to puncture the skin. Lastly, we, use, we, we also use the hot pressed uh, aluminum template, but this time we coated it with silane to make sure that it would uh, easily remove, so it's an anti-adhesion layer. Now, we have a small demonstration for you for our products. We have two prototypes, the LDP and HDP on Jello, and to demonstrate that it works, I'm just gonna throw it yeah, on Jello, and then just put it upside down. So, the LDP stays more than the HDP. Um, yes. So uh, now we're going to talk about the future directions uh, and possible commercialization. Now, or and next steps. So next steps, we're going to try and reduce the thickness of the patch to make it more flexible. We want to explore more polymers to make sure that LDP or HDP is the best one and can also puncture the skin. Next, we want to scale up the coverage area. Of the, to make a, of the patch, because right now it's only one centimeter by one centimeter. We want to increase it to make sure it's um, large enough. And lastly, we want to increase surface uh, contact, surface area contact with the skin, which means we would have to uh, increase the density of these anchors. And I'll talk about the commercialization effort. That, uh, so, so the first one is the customizability of our product. So, a uh, consumer can buy our product and cut patch into desired shapes, which is another advantage. But the problem will be the existence of the anchor because not all the, not all the wound is made linear, which means that we have to find a way to remove anchors at undesirable location because 
if our microneedles are applied on the side of the wound, it's going to cause a lot of pain. And that led us to a consideration of pain management, that we were thinking of applying pain relief additive to reduce the pain or, and develop puncture and release mechanism after the swellable layer swells and acts as an anchor. Another direction would be the use of wound healing additives with, to enhance the healing at the wound site. All right, so possible applications, as uh, Hoji has mentioned before, we have two, external and internal use. So external would be outside. We would target large surface area wounds uh, that are shallow. And this would mean that the, property, uh, the properties of these patches would have to, be, they have to be flexible. They have to retain the tension on the outside to make sure there's no scars. Um, it, has to be, it should be transparent. And also, there should uh, be breathability to allow air to go through. Um, so that, what that would mean is next steps, we'd have to make a thinner, design, a thinner prototype. We have to change the polymer choice to make sure that the tension is retained. And we also look at anchor and our anchor design as well. Uh, next is the internal application. So inside soft tissue, inside, inside organs. Uh, for these, we have to make sure that it's also flexible. It's comfortable when, uh, so it doesn't like, hinder any other organs. Um, it has to retain attention as well, and also, most importantly, uh, biodegradability inside the body. Um, for that, we have to look at the polymer choice and also anchor design. Um, so we're nearing the end of this presentation. We'd like to acknowledge our consultant, Professor Bo Kui. Uh, our template manufacturer was uh, Professor Rick Cullum and Jason uh, Banger. Uh, we also uh, asked uh, Salau Khan to do the anti-adhesive layer. And we'd like to thank Jane Kogan for all her administrative help. Thank you, guys. So we didn't actually employ, our first initial idea was to employ the second layer as well. We couldn't get to that stage. We, because of our hot press uh, method, we didn't know um, how we can use the second layer or, okay. or how do you include, include the second layer. Oh, I guess that depends on the material. When we were talking to, with our consultant as well, he mentioned that most of the materials that we listed were water soluble which means that basically if we apply on the skin, it might disappear. Yeah. So another, another method, or so he, what he suggested was to cross-link that. And we had to make sure, we'd had to find some cross-linker as well. So that would be very, that's, that, was a, that was a difficult part for us. We didn't, yeah. Um, if, if you want, let, would like to take a look here, here's our micro mill, um, micro mill template. And then if you look at our, our, just our prototype here, our anchors are actually 300 diameter by 700 height. And those, that's 300 micrometer, uh, micrometers. And that would mean, if, and if I've tried it on myself to see if it works, it, <laughs> it doesn't puncture and it hurts. So what that means is we probably have a too too big and too long of uh, yeah, anchors. I was surprised that it stuck. It's yeah. Whenever you need to. Uh, I was surprised that it stuck. Because yes. You, you have relatively few pillars there. Yes. So you, have you estimated how We've, well it would stick if you had a high density? Uh, we haven't done calculations on that. No. So something like this, I would imagine, is something that to be effective, you need something like a reactor on an edge. Yeah. A barb. Uh, we thought of that, but in the in the process of micro milling, we can't. When we rip it off, we can't really have. Um, I'm guessing barbs. You mean like uh, yeah, those? Uh, yeah, yeah. When we try and remove it from our uh, anti adhesion or from our template, it will be very hard because we have like a outlet like this, and then we have to try and pull it out. If we can, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would agree. So, so we have considered that, but 
I don't think it's feasible for us to peel it off, the okay, template. So last question. Feel free to edit <laughs> uh, Last question. You presented a nature communications paper earlier in which they, they talked about, I, I, if I understood correctly, swallowable mm -hmm. yes. or adhesion in this matter. What is the novelty of your approach? Or have you yet to define that? Uh, we have yet to find that, no. Because okay. uh, they, what they used was they actually used lithography so we were in our intentions, because uh, as we approached Professor Boqui, was to use lithography as well yeah. to see if that actually works. And um, he turned us around on that idea. He told us that it's too, um, it was too hard because of the thickness. So yeah, it's, it's he guided really us towards, to yeah. It's the sort of thing I'd want to see six months of process development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The six of them going through the skin would not be felt, but would hold on long enough that uh, in any sort of swelling, they, they, uh, they bond yeah. more uh, strongly still. Then mm -hmm. you could make a case for doing that kind of development. Yeah. Well, the, the feeling part is also very hard because we don't know um, how deep our sensory. Yeah, that's been studied and put. You start to get nervous. <laughs> Okay. patches that they actually have in needles that have gone through the skin, but not so far enough to be felt, but close enough that you can start delivering drugs. Yeah. Some of the, the I saw that one, yeah. Center. But I've learned over time. I appreciate your patience. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, let's thank our speaker.